Welcome back to the Crafter's Cauldron. Today I'm going to be walking you through one of the designs from our Magical Mushroom Lanyard set. This is Cap 1 and the Moss Stitch Lighter Base. We're going to start with a magic ring and we're going to make six single crochets in that magic ring. For this pattern, I use the Westkit stitch. You might want to use a single crochet if you're not comfortable with it. The size should come out the same. I just have a very loose gauge naturally, and I find that the Westkit stitch is the best way for me to get a really nice dense fabric, especially for something that I want to hold its shape and really not have much drape or flow to it. For round two, I'm going to increase and then make one Westkit stitch. So that increase is going to be in a Westkit stitch style, where I'm going to go through the two vertical posts, make a stitch, and then make another stitch in that same space. And then we'll make one single Westkit stitch. We'll repeat that around for a total of nine stitches. For round three, I'm going to do another Westkit increase and then two Westkit stitches in the next two. This is an increase round of four repeated three times, so we'll end up with 12 stitches total. On round four, we're going to increase and then make three Westkit stitches in the next three stitches around for a total of 15 stitches. On round five, we're going to increase and then make four Westkit stitches in the next four stitches and then repeat this around for 18 stitches total. The next round, we're going to be making the holes for the lanyard.
In round six, we're making the holes for the lanyard, so we're going to start by chaining two, and then we're going to skip two stitches, and then waistcoat stitch seven, and then repeat that another time. This will give us a total of 18 stitches. In round seven, we're working in those chain two spaces, so we're going to make three single crochets in the chain two space, waistcoat stitch one, and then we're going to increase two waistcoat stitches, increase two waistcoat stitches, and then repeat that whole situation once more for a total of 24 stitches. The three single crochets in the chain two space are essentially the first set of increase one stitch and then the next stitch for the uh, repeat of four that we're doing six times around, but since we've got that chain two space, we're just going to work single crochets into the chain two space to kind of define it and so you don't have to work in the chain stitches, it gets a little fiddly. In round eight, we're going to increase and then make three waistcoat stitches in the next three stitches for a total of 30 stitches. So we're back to kind of increasing six times around evenly spaced like you normally do, would do with most like amigurumi patterns where you're making a circle because we're wanting the base of this mushroom to start to flare out.
in round nine, we're going to increase and then make four waistcoat stitches in the next four stitches around for a total of 36. And now we're done with shaping the base and we're going to bring it in so that it can kind of have a nice fold underneath and you don't have a rough edge. Rounds 10 and 11 are just worked with a waistcoat stitch all the way around, keeping those 36 stitches. And then we will start some decrease rounds. Round 12 is our first decrease round. We're going to work this decrease in the same waistcoat stitch style where you're going through the posts of the stitch below instead of through the loops. So we're going to decrease and then work four waistcoat stitches and then repeat this pattern around for a total of 30 stitches. For round 13, we're going to decrease and then work three waistcoat stitches and then repeat this around until you have 24 stitches and then we're going to slip stitch to join the round and you want to cut an extra long tail, maybe 18-24 inches 
because we're going to thread this tail onto a yarn needle and use it to whip stitch the base and make a more nice rounded base instead of leaving the loops as the edge of our mushroom. To finish off the edges of our cap, we're going to turn the cap inside out and then fold up the last two rounds. If you want, you can pin them in place, and then you're going to want to thread your extra long tail onto a needle, and then you're going to whip stitch these last two rounds up into place. I really think this gives a more finished look to the piece, and also gives it just more of a mushroomy appearance where it's kind of drawn in at the bottom. So we're just going to whip that, whip stitch that around and hide, weave in all of our ends from this and then it's going to be time to decorate. On this piece I'm going to do just some little tiny spots in a contrasting thread that matches the base. With our contrasting thread, I'm just going to tie a simple knot on the inside to secure it and then tuck that tail into the folded up area of the edge to hide it. And then I'm just making little tiny spots, so I'm just going to pull up my yarn anywhere you really want and make a simple chain stitch and then pull the yarn down on the outside of the stitch. Then when your yarn is on the back side, you want to kind of hide it a little bit and kind of go through just the back part of the fabric. It helps if you have a sharp needle. Those pla- wow, this is taking forever. <laughs> Those big plastic yarn needles I find aren't very good for anything that's even vaguely detailed. The uh, needle hole is just way too big. So I'm going to loop my yarn around, reinsert my hook, and then bring it back up about a quarter an inch above and then right on the other side of my loop I'm going to send it back down through. And that makes one nice little spot and then on the inside I'm going to put it in kind of just in the back loops there and push it back out and continue 
wrapping the yarn around and making these little chain stitches and locking them in place to make some little spots. For the base of this lighter lanyard, I'm going to work a moss stitch body, which is actually a new design that's been added to the pattern. So if you've already bought a copy of this pattern, make sure you download the updated version. I've added this stitch into it, or this lighter design into it. To start, we're going to make a magic ring and work six single crochets into that magic ring. For our second round, we're going to do one waistcoat stitch, two waistcoat increases, and then one waistcoat stitch, and then repeat that around. We should have a total of 12 stitches because we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a really hard time counting these. <laughs> um, and then we re repeat that again so we get the 12 stitches. For round three, I'm going to make two waistcoat stitches, and then I'm going to increase, and then I'm going to make three waistcoat stitches, and then repeat this one more time for a total of 14 stitches. For round four, I'm going to just slip stitch around. This makes kind of a little, a little base, a little delineation between our base and the moss stitch. It is purely decorative, um, but I really like the appearance of the stitch kind of going horizontally in a line. So I obsessively add this to all of my patterns and I think everyone hates it, but I think it looks cute.
In round five, we're going to work single crochets into each of 14 stitches, but we're not working in the slip stitches, we're working in the tops of the stitches from round three. This way we're completely leaving the slip stitches alone and they will be entirely visible around the side of the base. Now we're going to start our moss stitch, and we didn't slip stitch to join the last round. We're just going to start working our moss stitch in that first set of loops there and carry on around. So you single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, all the way around. You'll technically have 14 stitches, but you'll only have seven single crochets because you've got that chain one gap. In subsequent moss stitch rounds, you're going to single crochet into the chain one space, chain one, and skip to the next chain one space, single crochet in the chain one space, chain one, skip to the next chain one space. It's also really helpful if you go ahead and weave in that uh, round from, or end from our magic ring early because it does get a little tough to turn this thing inside out. But if you attach the lanyard the way I show you in this video, you'll have to do it anyway, I guess. So yeah, so we're just going to carry on moss stitching all the way around. There's no end of the round, there's no joins, because if you do that, you end up with kind of a diagonal staggered seam. And honestly, I think it looks just fine if you just do it in a spiral. I haven't noticed. I think the first stitch might have a little bit of a gap. For round 12, we're going to start in our first single crochet from the moss stitch round below and we're going to single crochet all the way around. You can either work in the loops or you can single crochet in the chain one and then single crochet in the top of the single crochet. Um, I prefer to work in the loops just because it's way easier to find than trying to single crochet into a chain one but I, yeah I just stick it through the chain one and make one and then through the loops and make one. So we should have 14 single crochets when we're done with this. For round 13, we're going to slip stitch around, and this just makes a nice tighter top to the base. I find that if you do just the single crochets, it's a little too loose, it doesn't hold its shape as well, so we're just going to slip stitch around 14 times and then slip stitch to join our round. For our last round, we're going to slip stitch, not in the slip stitches from the last round, but through the tops of the single crochets from round four, 12. And this is just kind of giving us more of that defined edge, a little bit of a rolled edge, and just some more structure there that kind of grips on to whatever you are putting in your holder. So it's a pretty good size for a lighter, not too tight that you can't put it in, but still a little grippy almost. So we're just going to slip stitch around 14 and then slip stitch to join the round and then I'll usually chain one just to secure it and then I will cut a tail and pull that end through.
before I start assembling, I'm going to weave in the rest of my ends. So I've got the end from the actual base, and then also the end from the magic ring that I've got to weave in. And then what we're going to do is thread the lanyard through the mushroom cap and get ready to assemble it. All of this is done with the base of the lighter bag inside out so that we can hide everything. So now we'll thread the ends of our lanyard. I've made a really short one here just for like a keychain or to hang on a bag, not so much a lanyard. And then what I do is I take the tails and insert my hook into round 12, grab the tail, pull it through, and then just slip stitch down the side. I promise no matter how janky this looks, you can't see it when you flip it back over in the moss stitch. But I found this is the best way to really be able to make sure that your lanyard doesn't end up pulling. Because if you tie it or try to weave it in, I feel like sometimes when you pull on the lanyard, you'll end up with a little bit that slips out where you can see the tail instead of having a good join. But if you slip stitch it where you pull, pull a little bit of the chain through on that first slip stitch, it'll hold really securely. Once we've done this, it's just time to flip it inside out and admire your work. I hope this helped. I know I use a lot of weird stitches in my patterns, so I really need to start doing more of these video tutorials so that people know what on earth I'm talking about, because I taught myself how to crochet wrong, <laughs> and I'm still learning how to do a single crochet with normal tension like all you guys. I'm so jealous. Anyway, here is our finished little lighter lanyard keychain thing. Good size. You can also stick a jewel in there because I couldn't find a lighter. And then there you go. Got a little cap. Pull it up. It's a little big for a jewel, but I can't imagine trying to make one that would fit a jewel. It would be so tiny. Anyway, thank you for watching and Subscribe to see what bubbles out of the cauldron next.